Hello, welcome to Reformation and Revival Now. This is Brother Kevin, and I've come with a call to all intercessors. Revelations chapter 12, verse 1. Now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of twelve stars. Then being with child, she cried out in labor, and in pain to give birth. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and the seven uh, diadems on his, on his heads. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven, and threw them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, who was ready to give birth to devour her, to devour her child as soon as it was born. She bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up to God and to his throne. Now I want to stop there for just a second. Um, a lot of times we'll call these symbols, okay, but I want to stay away from that. When you see things in the spirit, remember the church is a woman. So if the church, if God calls the church a woman, that's what she is. So now you're looking at the woman pregnant, the Lord's bride, pregnant with, okay, the revelation of Jesus Christ. That's the gospel being birthed in the nations of the world because Satan can't eat Jesus up. Satan doesn't pose a threat to Jesus personally. Satan poses a threat to the birthing of the gospel in the nations. He wants to devour that child, that Jesus Christ by revelation of the king to be born, to be birthed in nations. He wants to devour it before that intercession can be finished and that child can be born. Now, Satan wants to get it as soon as it's coming out of the canal. Satan wants to destroy that revelation, wants to con consume it. I want to say to you as, as intercessors and as prophets, I want you to bear down and be faithful. Don't give up. Keep on until the baby is born because once it's born, God will send his angel. That revelation of Jesus Christ will be caught up. So over that nation, the heavens where Satan is, the, the little heavenly realm, the firmament, it's going to pierce right through that. And it's going to be an open heaven from God's throne room, piercing right through that little second heaven, that little middle heaven, right down upon that city or right down upon that nation and open heaven where the gospel is released. Now this I know may sound strange to you, but when you look at it this way, it puts this scripture in the now. But let's go on and see some other great things that are in here. I'll back up one verse more repeated. She bear she bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up to God into his throne. Then the woman fled into the wilderness. There she had a place prepared by God that they should feed her uh, there 1,260 days. And war broke out in heaven, and Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and his the dragon and his angels, they fought, but they did not prevail, nor was their place found for them in heaven any longer. Now, I love how this translation says no place in heaven any longer. When we do intercession, Satan cannot find a place. Him and his demons are forced to the ground. You force them. See, Satan rules from the principalities and powers over nations. When we pray in the sea, we force them to the ground. We force them into the open. Satan doesn't want to be in the open. If he's in the open, everybody goes, ooh, ooh I'm scared. These demon manifestations. No, he's vulnerable. Don't let his intimidation fool you. He's vulnerable. He doesn't want to be pushed in the open. In the open. He wanted to be in heavenlies. They're crying out, accusing God's people day and night. He's brought down. Intercessor, bring him down. And keep on laboring in the spirit until the child is born. Because the revelation of Jesus Christ that you're praying for over that city, over that nation, over that country, 
will force Satan to the ground as it as the revelation is caught up in heaven it brings that relationship over that city that now a relationship between you and that country piercing those heavens forcing by the revelation of Jesus Christ forcing the knowledge of Jesus Christ into that nation into that city Satan is now forced out from his heavenly abode from that little place of the firmament, from that place of the overlay that people can't see, forces him down. Michael, at your prayer, Michael, at the word of the Lord, through your prayer, forces him down. No place is found for him. Now, let's go on. So the great dragon was cast out, that old, old uh, serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world, was cast to the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ has come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of, our test and the word of their testimony. And they did not love their life to the death. Now there's a whole lot I can say here, but I want you to know. It is saying that we are to rejoice because Satan has been cast down. Satan is always cast down through the prevailing intercessory prayers of his people. See, when Jesus was caught up, when Jesus resurrected, he said, all power is given to me in heaven and earth. Now you as my people, you are my ambassadors, you are my police officers, you are my military, you go and carry it out. So now we take that gospel through intercession, we take it through preaching and teaching, and we pierce the darkness with that gospel. And Satan is overcome. Now the scripture also says, Woe unto you on the earth, for the devil has come unto you, and a great wrath, because he knows that his, his uh, time is short. Now, I want to say something about that. Satan is mad because he's forced into the open. Now he has to use another form of intimidation because he's got to use wrath and meanness and displays because he can't do that invisible rule. See, Satan doesn't really want to be known. He wants to be secret. We are forcing the devil into the open where simply Christians can cast him out. Those who know their God and know the power of the name of Jesus. Satan doesn't want to be in the open because he doesn't want to draw attention to himself lest he be cast out. So intercessor, let me encourage you. Keep on praying keep on travailing let the spirit bring it out because as jesus brings out that revelation as you intercessors continue satan is standing there he wants to devour that revelation he wants to devour that outpouring over that nation but you intercessors stand strong in jesus name god is going to break through and as he breaks through and that revelation is birth into that nation or birth into that state or birth into that city or birth into that neighborhood Satan is forced out. The child, the revelation is caught up between that nation or that city or that country. That is caught up between God and that nation. There's an open heaven there and now the gospel can be carried out. And now the darkness can be dispersed. And then all of a sudden people just all of a sudden put down their drinks. Put down their, their reckless living. Put down their unfaithfulness. Put down every darkness. And they begin to serve Jesus Christ. This is what happened in the revival of the Herbides. Some I mean, of you heard of the Herbides revival, or maybe you heard of the Welsh revival. When you see these type of things, when people just all of a sudden get up and start trying to find God and there's no preacher to talk to them, that means in the heavenlies, there's a breakthrough. When you study the Herbides revival, you will find out that these people begin to pray. And when that thing was broken in the heavens and the revelation of Jesus Christ was so powerful, people got up searching for God that were in just were in the bars just the day before looking for Jesus look asking for Jesus in the police station asking for Jesus in the park asking for any church can you show me how to get to Jesus some people say I've never seen anything like that this we need to study revival history where you can see that thing on display the saints begin to pray and the Lord breaks out the baby is born, and once the baby is born in that nation, we see revival. Uh, Brother Duncan Campbell said that he was not the force behind the Herbides revival, but the intercessors who had knew their place in Jesus Christ prayed and broke that thing open and saw the gospel hit that place. Now, B. 
be encouraged, those of you who are intercessors, and read this Revelation chapter 12 and see it without dispensational eyes. See how God could be using you and your team and your brothers and sisters to birth into the nations of the earth. The gospel, the Lord of the harvest, sending in anointed men and women, evangelists, missionaries, prophets, and teachers and pastors that will go and preach the gospel and make disciples and take this gospel to every nation. Get ready. God is ready to use you. Well, I hope this little short message will be a blessing to you. Write me in Sultana and subscribe. But anyway, Jesus loves you. And Sultana and I do pray for us. And I'll see you in the videos to come. Bye-bye.